shiver in the dark. It's been raining in the park. We are the sultans of swing. Neither snow, nor frost, nor sleet, nor hail shall stay these pen enthusiasts from their appointed and obsessive rounds of checking the frozen meat locker we call a mailbox. And that squeaking you're hearing is the fact that it's minus 26 degrees Celsius to 26 degrees C, which stands for Canada. And here we are at the mailbox. Let's open it. What the? Hello there and welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. And thank you to those of you who have supported my channel by liking and subscribing. Your support allows me to continue to bring you fountain pen reviews as I'm unsponsored on this channel, so thanks. Today I fulfill one of my New Year's resolution. I pledge to keep an open mind about Lamy and buy one of their non-Safari All-Star fountain pens. Regarding the Safari and the All-Star, my mind is made up and the subject is closed about those pens. To those of you who love safaris and all-stars, I'm sorry that you love them. I'm sorry for Alan Thicke, Shania Twain, Celine Dion, Loverboy, your beer. I know we have nothing to do with your beer, but we feel your pain. <laughs> and finally, on behalf of all Canadians, I'm sorry that we're constantly apologizing for things in a passive-aggressive way, which is really a thinly-veiled criticism. But I thought I shouldn't condemn the entire Lamy brand because of one pen design, even though the Lamy aesthetic is, uh, what's the correct word for it? Let's go with austere. In my fountain pen journey, path of discovery, venture of enlightenment, whatever. Insert your new age aphorism here. I've discovered that I dislike slim pens and slick metal sections. That pretty much zaps the entire Faber-Castell brand for me. Oh, that this tutu solid flesh would melt. Zap! But there are some Lamy models I found interesting. I've not yet brought myself to the point where I could conceive of laying out a couple hundred dollars for a Lamy 2000. It still feels like I'd be writing with a bronze shaver. I might be convinced as it seems to be universally loved and accepted as one of the greatest fountain pen designs in history. But Jackson Pollock might also be considered a million dollar drop cloth as well. So there's no accounting for taste. So convince me you ink acquiring minds out there. But there is a model of Lamy that intrigued me. I'm not adverse to sleek designs, and the Lamy Studio has great lines and a very cool propeller-shaped clip. The slick chrome section was a deal breaker for me until I saw the Studio Palladium model. The cap, body, and section are all anodized palladium that has what appeared to me a really nice amount of texture that would provide some needed traction for my slippery fingers. Plus it comes with a wide variety of gorgeous 14 karat gold nibs and one was an oblique medium. I love my italics oblique broad, but it is a bit thick for everyday writing, so this oblique medium might just be the ticket. So on Christmas Day, when I had posted my New Year's pen resolution, I ordered this Lamy Studio Palladium with an oblique medium 14 karat gold nib from Cult Pens in the UK. And then the adventure began. So sit back, relax, get yourself a beverage, and I'll regale you with the saga of the cult pen Lamy and the bloody Brexit, right now. Okay, this is exciting, finally. 
this package is here. I ordered this uh, between Christmas and New Year's, then was informed a few days later that uh, the package was delayed because of, not because of COVID, because of Brexit. Well, thank you very much, Brexit folks. But it's finally here. This is the fulfillment of a New Year's resolution I made about having an open mind to German fountain pens, especially from Lamy. So this looks like it's been through the wars. Um, it was uh, delayed by Brexit and then went through the mails and uh, was tossed and turned. Seemed to go all over the planet first before it arrived in Canada and then uh, Canada kind of lost it and then found it and then lost it again. And uh, it's got more stickers on it than a teenage girl. But let's open this up and see whether it survived. And we have a nondescript white box. So I did buy this from Cult Pens. It's wrapped in some tissue. And we have a Lamy box. Ooh, it's cold. Silver foil embossed. And it is a fold open box. That's nice. A little ribbon holding it. And some foam holding the pen down. Oh, it's cold. And it's cold because it's minus 25 degrees Celsius out right now. And you can see it's, this pen is frosting up. <laughs> it's actually got frost on it from the humidity in my room. So I'm going to put this aside for a moment to let it warm up. But let's first look inside the box. There's nothing. Oh, there it goes. And a Lamy guarantee. Two years. A Lamy booklet. With all the different pens. Some Lamy cartridges. And an official Lamy converter. And it's cold too. That's cold. Even to a guy like me, that's cold. So I'm anxious to do this review. You'll probably see it uh, about a week and a half from now. Until then, I'm going to write with it. So now that the pen is no longer a little popsicle and frost free, uh, I've been writing with it for about a week and a half now, it's time to review it. And I also get an opportunity to show off this little pen roll, pen case that I was gifted by my friend Janice. It's got a lovely little button on it with this nice design. And it's sort of in an oxblood color. Leather. And you roll it open. And there's the pen. And I felt it needed to be in some kind of a protective cover. Because, uh, well, you'll see as we look at this pen. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. I found this model of Lamy Studio and was intrigued that it might actually be usable for me as the grip section didn't look slick and uh, the pen looks like it might be well balanced and I love the way it seems to uh, click to post. Uh, plus, I was influenced by Kathy at Gadget Stop 321 with her videos where she shows off her Lamy Studio. She was right about my E95S, and I got that pen because of her, and I'm delighted with it. So, so she might be correct again. So I started to search. The Lamy Studio prices are all over the place. I looked at my local pen shop online with Apple Bomb, Goulet Pens, Jet Pens, Pen Chalet, Gold Spot. Wonder Pen, Stilo, and none of them could match the price of Cult Pens in the UK. Plus, having purchased my Platinum President from Cult Pens, I received a 10% discount at checkout. No VAT, of course, and free shipping. I should note here that you too can get 10% off your purchase at Cult Pens by clicking the link in the description. 
You can also get 10% from Apple Bomb uh, by typing friend into the coupon field when you're checking out. So on Christmas Day, I pulled the trigger on this Lamy Studio Palladium. And after bouncing around in the International Post, being lost, redirected, frozen into a popsicle, here it is being reviewed on February 18th, 2021. Overall, this is one classy looking fountain pen. It is sleek, silky smooth, symmetrical design, and the anodized palladium body looks more textured than it actually really is. Even when it doesn't have frost on it, it's cool to the touch and fairly slippery. The pen was designed by award-winning furniture designer Hans Wettstein. I can't find out when the model was first introduced, but it had to be before 2008, because that's when Wettstein died. Perhaps some of you know. It's the perfect nexus where form and function merge, and therefore I think Hans Wettstein deserves to be praised alongside other designers like Frank Lloyd Wright, Walter Gropius, and Joni Ivey. From the top, we see a shiny chrome finial that is slightly domed and holds the unique propeller-shaped clip in place. Some people don't like this clip, but I like it a lot. It's stylish and different and works extremely well. It's too slippery to grab like this, like you'd expect to grab it. Uh, but because of that 90 degree turn in the propeller blade, uh, it reduces the contact point right here to a fraction of a normal clip. And so it slips into pocket pens and cases and even pockets of your jeans very nicely. I like it a lot. The cap has Lamy printed onto the top in some very crisp letters. And I can't tell whether that's laser etched or, or part of the uh, anodization process or it's inked on there. I just can't tell but it's very beautifully done and elegant. The cap tapers up to a seamless transition to the barrel, which tapers away again in a very elegant and symmetrical curve to the end finial, which mirrors the cap finial in this shiny chrome dome, except for a small lip right there. That's part of the cap posting mechanism. The cap snaps off to reveal a long tapering section made of the same anodized palladium that I was hoping would provide more traction than the slick chrome of the other studio models. There are some models that have black rubber on this part of the section, but I thought they just looked really ugly. The one thing this anodized surface provides is relief from fingerprints, which makes me stark raving nuts. He's crazy. They're all crazy. They're all crazy except you and me. Sometimes I have me doubts about you. Yes. It isn't actually too bad, but the section on the Moon Man T1 has more traction to it for some reason or another. There's a tiny step from the barrel to the section and that actually provides a little bit of purchase for my thumb while gripping the pen. I don't hold my pen far down towards the nib, uh, but there is a small chrome ring right at the end with a small lip on it. Uh, that is part of the capping mechanism. Uh, that could be a finger stop, I suppose, if you're a Tinkerbell. And here is the gorgeous 14 karat gold Lamy nib. This is one of only two models of the Lamy Studio that come with a 14 karat gold nib, the other being the Piano Black edition. You can purchase these gold nibs separately if you wish to upgrade your Safari to gold. I think this nib is just gorgeous. The gold center band has a finely engraved border around it and around that breather hole. And then the printing says OM for oblique medium. 14K 585 for the gold content and Lamy. Again, in very fine line engraving. Just beautiful. And here is the plastic feed. And you can see the rails to which the nib is attached. And that ink filling hole right there. 
these nibs are easy to swap you just put some scotch tape on that nib right there and pull it laterally and it comes right off and here you can see the unique oblique medium grind on that tip the section unscrews to reveal the included Lamy Z27 converter and of course this pen will accept Lamy long cartridges as well inside the cap shows a plastic liner held in place with a brass screw the cap posts deeply and securely with a satisfying click so you know it's not coming off this is where the German engineering really shows there is incredible attention to detail with how this pen posts not just with the click on the end finial into the same mechanism uh, that secures the cap but also to allow the cap to post without touching the edges of the barrel now if I move that you can see how it moves some people have noted that that looks like a flaw it's not a flaw there's a minuscule half a millimeter at most gap there that keeps that cap from touching the barrel when it's posted it's that kind of attention to detail that gives German engineering its uh, well-deserved accolades when the pen is capped the cap doesn't although it turns it doesn't spin so it's not flopping around on there at all but it does turn further the balance of this pen is incredibly well thought out it is beautiful in the hand both posted and unposted I feel comfortable doing both of course with this marvelous posting ability it is a shame not to post the pen why would you not post this pen well this pen has only been in my possession for a couple of weeks I already have some flaws on it from posting and unposting this pen there then now you can see that flaw that's not a flaw that's some kind of a scratch from me posting and unposting the pen so there's another scratch there imagine what this pen will look like in 50 years this pen retails for around $168 US for the Palladium Edition with the 14 karat gold nib. I got mine from Cult Pens UK for 111 pounds, which is around $155 US, and I paid another $15 US in duty. But since I got free shipping and the shipping from Goulet Pens is about the same, it's a wash. So why didn't I get it from Goulet? Well, Goulet only has the EF, F, and medium nibs, where Cult Pens has EF, F, M, B, and OM nibs available. And as you can see, now the price has increased. I guess I'll call that the Brexit exit tax it, passed on to the consumer, of course. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And we're back with the Lamy Studio Palladium. And here it is with a Hongdian 525 a Wingsung 601 flighter a Waterman Karen and a Lamy Safari now let's look at them posted and here they are posted you can see all five of these pens post like champs the winner in my opinion is the Waterman Karen which has this beautiful 18 karat gold inlaid nib and uh, posts very very deeply the Wingsung 601 is a fabulously balanced pen this was a little bit more expensive because I've upgraded the hood on this to stainless steel and that hood is about the same price as the pen and I've upgraded it with a, uh, a Bobby Bent nib as well this Hongdian 525 is uh, is new to me I haven't reviewed it yet you'll probably see this pen next week and I got it because I thought it looked so similar to the Lamy Studio now let's look at some size comparisons and I'll be back with a writing sample and we're back with the writing portion of the review this is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper as always and this 
is the Lamy Studio Palladium. And it has a 14 karat gold oblique medium nib. Let's check the wetness. This nib is nicely wet. Um, and when I cleaned it out before inking it up, uh, it showed some residual blue ink. Here's a photo of it. Uh, this is from the Lamy factory where they checked it with ink before they boxed it. I'm not sure if they do this for every Lamy pen from the Safari to the 2000, but it shows the amount of care they take in their products. Very smart. And the ink today is appropriately bloody Brexit. And that's by Diamine. And here is the swatch for the Diamine Bloody Brexit, which is very similar to the Diamine Skull and Roses. It's a deep, deep blue that looks purple because of all the red sheen in it. The Skull and Roses has a lot more sheen to it than the Bloody Brexit. And here's some Ferris Wheel Tanzanite. The nib is very, very smooth. and has some character with no pressure because of the oblique nature of it. It's very, very slight. It isn't as exaggerated as my italics oblique broad italic, but it is there. And the nib is incredibly smooth with some good amount of feedback. As with any oblique, however, you have to be careful of your nib orientation as taking the nib from a ball to a slant will limit the window of pen rotation the nib will tolerate and still lay down ink. I think I got off axis on this stroke right here because I have not had any issues with this pen skipping at all. I don't find that getting used to the nib and the angle a problem at all. And actually, on smooth paper, the nib sings a bit. Maybe you've experienced that as well. As to line variation, well, that's no pressure. That's a little bit of pressure, and you can see that gold nib is flexing. But this is not a flex nib, and I don't like writing with any amount of pressure. I like it to be as smooth and light as possible. But it will bend a little bit because it's gold. Comparing this line, to my Richard Binder chart, it comes out as 0.6 millimeter line, which is a Western medium and a Japanese medium to broad. And for our quote, to make sure I get that quote right. And my camera went off when I was doing that last bit. <laughs> very nice. Okay, so I did some reverse writing, and it writes actually very nice. It's uh, fairly wet, but it tends to lose ink after a bit. Uh, and it's not scratchy at all. I was quite surprised with the reverse writing. And with quick writing, as you can see, it's very wet and writes very, very fast with absolutely no issues whatsoever. So, what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? Have I kept an open mind about Lamy? Is it? Lamy, Lamy. Gorlomi, lo pronuncio correctamente. Uh, sí, uh, correcto. Gorlomi, 
per cortesia me lo ripeti ancora gorlami lami lami i don't know mi scusi con me gorlami ancora una volta gorlami i think i've kept an open mind it helps that the pen doesn't force my grip into sister mary elephant's idea of how i should grip a pen i am your substitute teacher Sister Mary Elephant. Class, attention. Attention, class. Class. Sister Mary discipline with a steel ruler, right? Oh, my hand! And you'd fall two years behind in penmanship, right? <laughs> At least behind in penmanship, Mrs. Carlin. I don't know why. He's crippled. He's trying to learn to write with his left hand. Right? That's a plus in my book. But this pen just oozes class and ergonomic design. From its weight and its balance to its secure posting, sleek lines, and this ultra gorgeous 14 karat gold oblique nib with tons of character and smooth, luxurious writing experience. Again, it's glassy with what is a touch of feedback, which I really, really like. The packaging and quality control is top-notch. Excellent round. Excellent round. Top-notch, top-notch. All right. However, I do have some criticisms of this pen. Oh, no. Not again. Although it is definitely less slick than the chrome version, this palladium section is still plenty slippery. And not so much from sweaty fingers, which actually help, and I don't have sweaty fingers, but from the dry touch you get when it's minus 25 degrees Celsius outside and you live in a desert climate. The pen slides through your fingers very easily. I noticed your grips were worn, sir. I should have mentioned to you before. I, I could put some stick on there for you. It's my fault. Next time, be more careful. Plus, like all metal pens, it's relatively cool to the touch when you first pick it up, but it warms up quickly. My biggest concern, however, with this pen is these abrasions that I'm getting here on the barrel from only handling the pen for a week, and very carefully at that. I can imagine what it would look like if it were in a purse or a drawer or a briefcase for any length of time. And can I recommend this pen? Well, if you can get a deal on this model, I'd say yes. But for a steel nib version with a shiny chrome metal section, I would say it's not worth the price. As it is, this is a beautiful gold nib pen that writes flawlessly for a reasonable price. If you're thinking that you could get the cheaper chrome section studio and add a gold nib well that adds a hundred dollars to the price right there but i suppose you could get a safari and add the gold lamy nib and you've got a 14 karat gold nibbed pen for just 130 bucks well, that would be like putting michelin defenders on a 1972 pinto will i try another lamy model i kind of doubt it this is as sexy as Lammy gets right here. And the other models, well, they look like they either belong to Robbie the Robot. Danger, Will Robinson. Danger. Or were designed by Terry Gilliam. But nowadays, with all the new rules and regulations, I can't get this in staff anymore. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. And don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. <laughs>